Come on in, everyone. Come on in because we are back, y'all, to talk about the Braxtons, y'all. Season one, episode five. Um, I don't know what they call in the video. I never know what they call in the video. I always retitle all the videos anyway. And um, what am I recalling this one? I'm retitling this episode to a sister's try to rewrite history. <laughs> These Braxton sisters act like we ain't got 10 years of uh, video footage on the internet. <laughs> and we can fact check everything they saying. We fact checking everything they are saying. Uh, before I get into it, before I get into it, I got to say thank you to all my new subscribers. Thank you for coming over here and checking out my channel, my video. Thank you for giving me the thumbs up. Thank you for uh, putting the comments down. I'm still catching up on all my comments, but I'm going to get to them. Uh, but thank you for all the comments, the likes, everything, uh, the super chats, everything you've been doing for me. I really appreciate it. I hope we get along over here. I hope we get along. I hope we don't end up being like these Braxton sisters. Because <laughs> pretty soon, it's not going to be called the Braxtons or Braxton's family values. It's going to be called Braxton family lies. Because I'm telling you, the lies just roll off the tongue. <laughs> they just roll off the tongue. One of the viewers yesterday use the exact word of what I was thinking about what's going on with this, this family. Because like I said, this didn't just start uh, today. Oh, they didn't wake up like this. Okay. Where's, where is um, Beyonce? They did not just wake up like this. This has been a long time in the making. And uh, one of my viewers used the word a triangulation is what that mama does. And I'm telling you, it's exactly what she does with all her daughters. It's exactly what she does with all her daughters. Y'all notice that Miss E is closest to the daughter who's ever given her the most money. <laughs> Miss E said, I'm going where the money reside. I'm going where the money resides because she either close with Tony because y'all say she Tony paying her bills or she close with Tamar. Remember when Tamar had all that money and she was with Vince and that mama was over her house all the time cooking with Logan. <laughs> that mama go where the money resides. That ain't no joke. But she definitely um, does that little triangulation thing that my viewer talked about. And this episode, you know, the more I watch Tawanda, the more I say, Tawanda, girl, Tawanda, you really need to go sit down. Because Tawanda got on here at the top of the episode uh, screaming and yelling. Screaming and yelling at the producers, talking about her show, her platform, what she ain't going to do. I thought this show was about to be paying homage to, to Tracy, to honoring her legacy. But T uh, Tawanda done made this show to be about her. <laughs> her and, and Trina, they're the only ones on the show because uh, Tamar don't really want to show up. Tony always got somewhere else to be. <laughs> I think Tony books the show when she finds out the schedule of these sisters. She always act like she got a scheduling conflict. I think Tony creates the scheduling conflict because Tony don't really want to be here. The only reason Tony's doing this show is so that this mama can get a check and that mama can be out her pocketbook. Because <laughs> now Tamor can't afford to give her mama no money. So uh, Tony must be back to paying all the bills. At least when Tamar was making a little money, when she was rolling, rolling high, with uh, Vince, she was able to support that mama. Because remember back then, Tamar was even supporting Tawanda too. Tamar, Tawanda been a lot of people's pockets. I don't know why Tawanda got beef with Tamar. Because when uh, Tamar was rolling with the money, she was over there giving Tawanda money too. Y'all remember that episode when she bought Tawanda that brand new car? Or a car, I don't know if it was brand new. She bought her that car. And Tawanda was over there living with her sisters. Everybody was paying Tawanda's bills because she was broke. Now she mad at Tamar, I guess, because Tamar ain't paying her bills no more. <laughs> Tawanda got a short memory. We know she got a short memory because she's the main one over here a rewriting uh, history. You know, if you think about those last videos when they were younger, Tracy would always talk about how she felt like she was the middle child. Even though she wasn't necessarily the middle child, she felt like she was the middle child. I think Tawanda got a little bit of that middle child syndrome too because let me tell you what i think is going on in this family tawanda is absolutely the mean the mean sister she's the mean girl tawanda is the mean girl and trina is trying to be a nice girl but the problem is she hangs around the mean girl which is tawanda that's really the problem trina wants to be the nice girl because trina really wants to just be party and have a good time and laugh and do a whole lot of drinking trina, trina been drinking her whole life that's really what trina wants to do 
But the problem is she hangs around the mean girl, the bully, which is Tawanda. And I think Tawanda became the bully because maybe Tawanda was like, what's my specialty in this family? What really is my specialty? And I'm really trying to, I'm trying to figure it out too, Tawanda. Um, because what I realized is we all know Tony was the star of the family. She's the one that could sing. She was a superstar. So we know what her specialty was. Um, we come to find out what we really know about Tracy is Tracy's specialty was she was liked by everyone. Tracy was very, very well liked. You can see this now in the uh, crowd, the audience, the viewers. And we really saw it this week when Tawanda told that story of that lady who dropped everything to be by the side of Tracy in her last days. And even Tamar had to cock her head like this and said, you know what, I don't want to be rude or anything, but what made you drop everything and go be by Tracy's side? Because you know what, Tamar ain't never witnessed, had that type of friendship. Tamar has never had that type of relationship where someone would drop everything just to be by your side. That tells you the difference between Tracy's village and her friends versus the friends Tamar has. Like I told you, all Tamar's friends are people on her payroll. She don't really have no friends. It's people who she pays. It's her hairstylist. It's her nail tech. It's her, it's her nanny. It's her this. She don't have no real genuine friends. So when she sees a woman like this woman, I don't know her name, drop everything to go by the side of Tracy, that's a real friend. And what Tamar is saying, how do you get a real friend? How do you get a real friend like that? Because I've never even experienced this. Tamar is like, I don't even experience that with my sisters. And the funny thing about that friend is if you hear Tawanda tell the story, Tawanda says, I was friends with her first. I was the one that knew her since she was 12 years old. But guess what happened? After that friend got to know Tracy, who did she become better friends with? Tracy, not Tawanda. Tawanda's a mean girl. I'm going to tell you right now, Tawanda's a mean girl. And Trina, they over here running around on this show like freaking frack. And Trina want to be the nice girl. She want to be the party girl, like her tagline used to say. But the problem is, is she's hanging around the mean girl. So um, that became, that's what, that's what the tagline should have been for Tawanda, mean girl. That's what it should have been, not the responsible one. Remember they were calling Tawanda the responsible one, but yes, she's the one over here with more bankruptcies and no money than most people. <laughs> she was employed most of her life by, by Tony to Tony had to finally say, girl, I got to drop you. She was Tony's assistant. She was her backup dancer. She was doing all these things. Has Tawanda ever made money on her own? on her own remember she was trying to be that actress and she went to the acting school now she over here making a whole tv show about tracy about tracy and then we know um we know that um uh, tamar's uniqueness would have been that she's the baby of the family so you had the baby of the family you had trina you know what i believe trina's uniqueness was y'all if i look at all the sisters i know i really know that tony is is very beautiful as well but if y'all go back to pictures of Trina when she was younger, before she got puffy from all this alcohol, Trina, girl, you need to lay off that alcohol. You need to lay off that alcohol. That alcohol, everybody can see it coming through your pores. You puffy. You puffy from the alcohol. But before she got puffy from all this drinking she's doing, uh, Trina was very, very pretty. If y'all go back to the early days, I always thought Trina was actually uh, one of the prettiest Braxton sisters. I know people want to say it was a Tony, but I really thought Trina was very, very pretty. So I think when they were younger, before um, Tony made it big with singing, I don't want to say that Trina's maybe uh, uniqueness in the family was that she was aesthetically pleasing than most. That's what I think. And I think um, Tracy was just well-liked. Everybody liked being around Tracy. She was fun. She was outgoing. She was funny. They loved her personality. That was her uniqueness. And then, of course, Tony was the talented one, and she was the big sister. And then the brother, he was the only boy. What's, what's Tawanda's uniqueness? So I think that's how Tawanda became the mean girl, because I think she became bitter. She became bitter, and now what she's doing over here in these episodes is she's, she's rewriting history, y'all. She, she done broke out her a story time book, and she's calling it Braxton Family Lies. And um, she's right, rewriting history. She sat on here and said, hey, we don't want Kev Sr. to be nowhere on this platform because he's too afraid that we're going to tell everything. Girl, no, ain't nobody afraid of that. In fact, you can still tell everything and have him come on the show. But what you're doing to Wanda is you're not 
preventing him or preventing yourself from telling your story. You're preventing him from telling his story. You icing him out. So you're doing the very opposite of what you're saying. If you really want Tracy's story to be told, how can the story not include a man she was married to for 30 years? No, Tawanda, you icing out Kevin Sr. Because what I think, what I think is Kevin Sr. knows where all the, the bodies are buried. Let me tell you, you don't be married to no family for 30 years and not know all the secrets. Tracy was doing some pillow talking with Kev Sr. He knows some secrets of Tawanda. And I bet Tawanda's got the biggest secrets of all. Maybe that's why she's the one going so hard in the paint. And what she's afraid of, she talking about Kevin Sr.'s afraid. Nah, Kevin Sr. ain't afraid. Probably who's afraid is Tawanda. Because Tawanda is, I mean, she is working overtime, y'all. She's working overtime to drag this man's name through the mud all over what? Because he held a memorial service for Tracy. And uh, fact check, fact check Tawanda. Girl, the gig is up. The gig is up because they done posted Tracy's whole wheel on the internet. Um, I'm not going to put it up here, but if you want to go on over there and, and look at it, it's called, uh, the YouTuber is really, her name is really BTV. She done got the wheel from the courthouse, the, the hall of records, and she went through the entire wheel. And guess what it said? It said pretty much the same thing I said last week on my video without seeing the wheel because I listened to that attorney. And one thing attorney's going to do is he ain't going to risk getting disbarred. He ain't going to say nothing a fake and false on television for national TV. That's why I listened to that attorney. And that attorney had already said exactly what was in that will and everybody running around talking about uh tracy left everything to um kevin senior no she didn't she didn't leave everything to kevin senior kevin senior got the bank accounts kevin senior got the house okay kevin senior who knows people over here talking about well tracy left all her life insurance policies to kevin senior y'all need to go educate yourself because let me tell you something. First of all, life insurance policies don't get placed in a will because life insurance policies pass outside of a will and a trust. People, please go educate yourself on wills and trusts because one day, hopefully, you will need one. And when I say hopefully, I'm not saying hopefully because I'm hoping you're going to pass away. Everybody going to die someday. But hopefully you got enough something to leave someone that you got something to write in a will. Hopefully you don't pass without no will because you ain't got nothing. So that's why I'm saying hopefully you get one. But let me tell you something. Life insurance policies do not get written in uh, and, and get doled out and passed on through wills or trusts. Life insurance policies have their own beneficiaries. They pass outside of wills and trusts. Go talk to an attorney who, who, spe who you know, specializes in this stuff. And let me tell you something else about life insurance policies for married people. Um, they're, the only way, the only way that Tracy could have left an entire life insurance policy in the name of Kevin Jr. with his name only would have to be that uh, Kevin Sr. would have had to sign off on it. You heard me right. You heard me right. Um, there's something that goes on in the community property states. I know a lot of people ain't married, but let me tell you something. When you are married, you have rights. And, um, I know a lot of people didn't think that he should have got that house. You got rights and the rights are important because the rights protect married people. I'm sorry, single people. You don't have as much protection as married people, but let me tell you what can happen. Me, I'm a married woman. I cannot go out and get a life insurance policy and leave all the money to my children without my husband signing off on it. You heard me right. You know why? Because what the uh, government or the laws or whatever, all my insurance people can drop down in the comments to correct me, verify, clarify, do whatever y'all want. Because when you're in a community property states, your money is community property. And if I have a life insurance policy, that means I'm paying for it with community funds. Community funds. So I can't pay for a life insurance policy with community funds being my money and my husband's money and then cut my husband out of the life insurance policy. You can't do it. Now I could leave some, but guess who has to sign off on it? My husband. We have to agree because I've used our community funds to buy a life insurance policy and therefore we both need to sign off on it. So this idea that Kevin Sr. is mad 
because Tracy locked him out of everything and gave everything to Kevin Jr. is a lie. It's a lie. It's what the sisters want you to believe because what they're trying to do is they're trying because because we all know Tracy loved her husband and her husband loved Tracy. The sisters are trying to rewrite history. The sisters are trying to rewrite their love. So they're trying to say, hey, look, even in even in Tracy's death, she didn't leave anything to Kevin Sr. She left everything to Kevin Jr. That's a lie. And the reason why they're telling you that lie is because they want to make Kevin Sr. the big bad person. And now they're trying to rewrite history as if as if Tracy didn't love her husband and she didn't love him enough to leave him anything. And that's a lie. He got every money in that bank account. He got that house. He got her ashes. He got the rights to even hold a funeral for her. Okay. He could have held whatever kind of funeral he wanted. She just didn't want the Eastern stars and her sorority, which I found out someone told me was Zeta Phi Beta to hold a funeral for her. She never said she didn't want her husband to do it. And these sisters are over here repeating this nonsense on national TV, which tells me, are they repeating it? Are they repeating it? Or did they never see the wheel themselves? Did they see the wheel and now they're lying or they never saw the wheel and they're just making up some kind of story they want? That's even worse. It's even worse because you know who wasn't in the wheel? They weren't in the wheel. So they wouldn't have been given a copy of the wheel. You know how you don't get a copy of the wheel? You don't get a copy of the wheel if you ain't in the wheel. And those sisters aren't in the wheel. Tracy didn't even leave them anything. Not one thing. Not one item did she leave those sisters. The only thing she said was, if my son and my husband want to, they can leave parts of my ashes to my sisters. And that's what they did. They gave the sisters some of her ashes. And I guess what that's what they put in the little butterfly. These sisters are trying to rewrite history. They're trying to rewrite Kevin Sr.'s love story with Tracy because they don't have the same love story. You got Tamar over here realizing she ain't even got the, the same friendship story of Tracy. She's over here admiring Tracy's friendships already. Later on, we got uh, Tracy, not Tracy. Later on, we over here got Trina admiring the fact that Tracy was so close to her grandchildren and she wants some grandchildren. And in fact, like I said, I miss E, she don't really seem too close to her grandchildren either. If I'm really honest, because the one thing we know about miss E, like I said, she goes where the money is. She goes where the money resides and she gets close to whatever daughter she needs to get close with. Who's going to pay her bills. And at most times that's Tony. But during those times, like I said, when Tamar was rolling in the money, I, Miss E stuck real close, real close to Tamar. That's why the sisters were jealous of Tamar. You used to always tell the mama, you let Tamar get away with everything. No, because Tamar was paying bills. That's why that mama let Tamar get away with anything because Tamar was paying some bills. Trina ain't never paid no bills for her mother. And we know for darn sure Tawanda ain't paying no bills. So, you know what I really think is going on with Kev Sr. and Kev Jr. I'm going to tell you what I think is going on based on my wisdom from being an older woman and seeing father and son relationships. This is what I think is going on. I think it's quite clear. I don't tell people. I know everybody's mad at me because I'm telling the truth about Kevin Sr. But Kevin Sr. is not at the maturity level he needs to be at for 30 years old. I know some of y'all corrected me and told me he ain't 30, he's 28. That's fine, people. 28, whatever. He ain't at the maturity level he needs to be at for 28 years old, especially with a wife and a baby. Now, maybe if he's 28 and he's just running around here on his own, that's fine. Do what you want. But he is not at the maturity level for a man that's 28 with a wife and a child. And you know what I think happened to Kevin Jr. and Kevin Sr.? I think that father was, gets hard on Kevin Jr. Because let me tell you something about a father and a son. That son was dependent on Tracy a lot. Kevin Jr. was dependent on Tracy a lot. That's one of the reasons why I think she even left him the rights to her likeness and her image because what she knew was he was going to need some help financially. He was going to need some help financially. And because she was no longer going to be here to provide for him, she couldn't necessarily rewrite an insurance policy for him. She says, I want to leave my baby some money because he's going to need some money. He's going to need some help. And I'm going to leave him this rights to my my likeness and my image so that way he can make a little money 
because Kevin Senior does not see, uh, Kevin Jr. does not seem to be able to make it on his own. He doesn't. And what I think was that father, let me tell you, when you get a father who has worked all his life and who has had to go through things in life and still has to have done that with a family and a wife, he expects the same from his child. And when that father sees a son being taken care of by a mother or being coddled by a mother, it bothers a father. Um, it bothers a father. Go to families, go to families where the mother is very involved in their son's life, giving that son money, coddling that son, even though that son is now 28, 30 years old with a family and a baby. That father in the house is putting pressure on that mother that you got to let this boy learn on his own. You got to stop babying him. You, you got to stop calling him. And I think what happened was that created a rift between the father and Kevin Jr. It doesn't mean he's jealous of Kevin Jr. That's what the sisters want to tell people. And that's also what the sisters have told Kevin Jr. I don't think that. I think what the father recognized was Kevin Jr., may not be the best equipped to make the best decisions with Tracy's legacy uh, likeness. Uh, he might get duped. He might get taken out here by somebody. Somebody might extract from him and use him because he's got the rights to it. And then next thing you know, he done signed a bad contract. But lo and behold, guess who those people were? His own aunties. His own aunties out here using him for his rights so that they can make a whole show about Tracy saying they're going to honor her and protect her. But so far, here we are on episode five. And really, this is the first episode in which they really tried to do something for Tracy that looked sweet. But yet, guess who didn't even show up? Tony. Tony was on the road once again. So all this show was about to be honoring Tracy. But the very episode when they finally do something for Tracy, give her a birthday party, guess who's not even there? Tony. Tony, I'll tell you, Tony finds reasons not to be around. She really does. So I think that father is pissed, but I don't think he's pissed because he's jealous. I think he's pissed because he's saying, hey, I tried to warn you what was going to happen to you. I knew that you weren't ready to have this sort of responsibility. And um, here we are. Here we are, because let me tell you something. I looked at that wheel. I sure did. I went over there, looked, call it tacky if you want to call it tacky. But I went over there and looked at that wheel. And one of the things I also noticed in that wheel is Tracy asked for a foundation to be created um, to, with uh, proceeds to go to cancer research. Have you all seen any type of credits on this show saying that they're donating any money to Tracy's foundation? No. Have these sisters even brought up? That, they're, that they even started the foundation? Has the foundation even been started? Or all these people making all this money off this show but not donating a dime to Tracy's Cancer Foundation? Where is it? It ain't even being mentioned. It ain't even at the credits at the end of the show. I read the wheel. They're so busy running around talking about how this husband had a memorial service for his wife in which she gave him the right to do in the wheel and talking about how he's not honoring her wishes. Well, what about the issues of starting the foundation for cancer research? Why aren't you donating no money from this show to that? Why y'all putting all the money in your pocket? Whoo, like I said, these folks is rewriting history. They trying, they trying to rewrite history. But like I said, the internet has been around for a long time. So everybody can fact check the way they treated Tracy. And right now, this is like, let's look like fake Fox News. To wander over here trying to uh, have monologues about uh, what really happened when they was younger and they signed this contract. First of all, Tawanda, girl, Tawanda is really committed to these lies. Is she going to these, Tawanda is signing up for these lies, lives. Tawanda is signing up for these lies like it's her job, and this show is her job. I mean, she, she done memorized these lines and these lies like she was doing when she was trying to become an actress and go into acting school. Um, remember she was trying to be an actress? Well, girl, you nailed it. You playing the hell out of this role that you're playing right now for the best dramatic actress is going to go to Tawanda Braxton. I did a whole video on her lies last week. Check it out. But the gig is up. The gig is up, Tawanda, because now we've seen the wheel and um, everything you're saying is a lie.
It really is a lie. Y'all can go over there and check it out on Really BTV, her YouTube channel. And um, Tony need to stop repeating lies because I know Tony ain't seen Tony ain't seen the wheel. She couldn't have seen the wheel because Tony wouldn't be saying that Tracy didn't want a funeral. Tony couldn't be saying that Tracy didn't want a funeral because it's clearly written in the wheel that that's not what Tracy said. So, Tony, you need to stop calling in your opinions from Japan or wherever you are, France, Italy, and you need to take a little time to read the wheel. I know these girls don't read contract real well. That's why they always in bankruptcy because they don't read well. They don't read well. They don't read fine print. That's why they always end with these money problems. And next thing you know, they calling themselves the victim talking about the we TV or all these uh, channels did them wrong and portrayed them wrong. They don't be reading fine print. All they do is say, how much you paying me? How much you paying me? Fine. I'll sign on the dated line. They're honey hungry. And how they get all this money hungry from? They got it from that mama. I'm telling you that mama goes exactly where the money resides, wherever the money is. That's where you're going to find that mama. That's where you're going to find that mommy going back to when she was married all those years to uh, Mr. Braxton. And he was cheating on her for nine years with that whole other woman that ended up marrying. Why did they stay together? She knew he was treat, treat, uh, cheating for nine years. You know why she stayed y'all? Because get, what else she going to do? She had six kids at the time. She had six kids. Where's she going to go? She don't have, she didn't have no ability to make no money. This we talking about back a long time ago. She didn't have no money to make no money. She stuck with Michael E. because she didn't have nowhere to go. And uh, Michael Braxton, he, he took up with that woman because, like he said, uh, Miss E. was mean as hell. <laughs> she, she was mean as hell. And he went over there and had a full-on affair with that woman for nine years. And he said, I stuck around as long as I could until these girls got out of high school. And the minute these all, the minute the last girl got out of high school, uh, Tamar, he was like, Phew! <laughs> he was out of there. He was out of there and went over there and, and married the other woman. He married the side chick. This ain't no, um, what's the other show over there? Um, Huntsville. Well, that man didn't marry the side chick. Braxton man, he married the side chick woman for nine years and stuck with her and still is with her, which means to tell me he really separated from Miss Evelyn years ago, years ago years ago he was only there to pay those bills for those kids those six kids and um miss e only stuck with him to get those bills paid that's why she stuck with him and i don't even know why they got married i don't know why why they got married you never really hear, hear them mentioning their love story of how they were in love i know they got married really really young like 17 and 18 she was 17 years old when they got married i think he was 18 or were they 18 and 19 i don't know they was young even back then, that would have been considered young to get married. Back then, I'm not saying people didn't get married young, but a lot of times when women got married that young, it was either because they were pregnant, which doesn't seem to be the case with Miss E, or they were heavily in the church, which I think these two were, and you know it was forbidden to have premarital sex, so they got married early so that um, they could be intimate with each other. They didn't want to sin. So let's say, hey, I'm 18, 17, 18 years old. I want to have sex. So we better get married because we can't have sex and not be married. Maybe that's what pushed them into marriage. I don't know. What's their love story? Because let me tell you, when you get married out of false pretenses and no foundation, then it's hard to keep, sometimes it's hard to keep your marriage together. And I'm not even sure that these two got married over love. They might have got married over lust. They might, got, they might have got married over lust and then the babies just kept coming because all these girls are really close together. Really, really close together. What is the age of, let me look up the age of these um, sisters. Okay, so it shows that Evelyn and Michael Sr. married in 1965 um, and she gave birth to Tony when she was 19. So I forget how old she was when they were married. Let me look that up. Hold on a second. So yeah, Evelyn got married at 17. That's underage. I don't know where they were. 1965. I still think that was underage. I don't know. Somebody can fact check me on that. But she got married at 17 years old. And they, um, that was in 1965. They had Tony. They had Tony when she was 19 years old. The next year. At 20 years old, she had Michael Jr. One year. 
She was, she was, she was pregnant, had that baby. One year later, she had Michael Jr., which means she got pregnant really soon. Then she had Tracy when she was 23 years old. She had Tawanda at 25. She had Trina at 26. She got stair steppers, y'all. She got stair steppers. Do you know how many kids she had and babies and diapers and crawling and not walking at one time? Tony at 19, Michael Jr. at 20, Tracy at 23, Tawanda at 25, Trina at 26, and then Tamar at 29. So by the time Miss Evelyn was 29 or 30 years old, she had one, two, three, four, five, six kids. Y'all, can you imagine? Can y'all imagine being under 30 years old with six children? And who knows, maybe you got married not because y'all were really in love, but because you were just trying to make sure you weren't living in sin. And remember, there wasn't a whole lot of birth control back then. There wasn't a whole lot of birth control. So they might have, they was having a good time. And every time Miss Evelyn was fertile, fertile, very, very fertile, because she was popping out babies every single year. And that alone, let me tell you, if you get married and you have a shaky foundation for getting married in the first place, you follow up a shaky foundation with six kids six kids in 10 years okay uh that's a lot of stress on a family it was a lot of pressure on michael senior to provide for a family of six children it was a lot of pressure on miss e to be the mother of six children at the young age of 30 years old i went back and looked at a couple of videos from um miss evelyn Remember that famous video when she said, spread it low and spread it wide. There was a moment during one of those videos where Michael E is saying, uh, yeah, he was out with another woman. He shouldn't have done it. And, but what he said was, where was you? He said, where were you? Um, they would try to cover it up. I don't know. I, I'll try to find the clip. They would try to cover it up. But there were some parts in there where, where what Mr. Braxton was accusing Miss Evelyn of was running the streets. Uh, she, he accused her of running the streets. He said, yeah, I cheated. Yeah, I had a mistress for nine years and I married her six months after um, I left you because I guess he wanted to make her, make that woman an honest woman. Maybe the same way he married Miss E. He didn't want to sleep with Miss E and not be married to her either. Um, so he went on and married that other woman. But what he said about Miss Evelyn is, well, where were you when I was at work all that time? Because what he was saying was, I was at work. You know where I was. I was at work because I had to provide for six kids and you because there's no way could Miss E be working with six kids. I don't think she was no business, no entrepreneur back in the 1965s. I ain't heard of nothing like that. So um, I guess he was trying to accuse Miss E of running the streets. <laughs> we can see it in her. I could see that Miss E would be a woman who would run the streets. And you know what? I can understand it because she, she, at 19, she, 19, she was married with, and then by 29, she had 30 children. She didn't get her time to run the streets because she was raising kids at a very young age. So I'm not blaming it. I'm just trying to talk about how we got here, because if you look at how we got here, it'll help explain some of this stuff going on with these girls, these ladies, because I'm telling you, these ladies are rewriting history and something in their mind does not want to accept the truth. It's like delusion. It's like they're still looking at their parents out of children's eyes. They're not looking at their children out of adult eyes. They're still thinking of themselves as little children and they're not little children anymore. And as a result, they need to be looking at the moves a father made and their mama made. And although the moves the mama made and the father made may not be the best of moves, they need to equally hold their mother accountable just like they're holding their daddy accountable because they don't hold their mother accountable for anything, anything. And that's why um, Mr. Braxton says that this, your mama is running y'all's lives and you need to let loose of that. And as a result of the mama running these people's lives, influencing these girls' lives, um, it's a whole lot of mess. I think that's also one of the things behind the fact that Tracy had a riff with her sisters because I think Tracy did what I was saying you should do. That when your parents split up, 
after your parents split up or has split up, everybody needs to go back and reevaluate your parents' marriage story through the eyes of an adult. I know as a child, all you feel is left. You might feel abandoned. But go back and evaluate your parents' behavior based on what you know as an adult. And I think what Tracy went back and did was she looked at her parents' relationship. She looked at all what was good and bad about it. And what she said was, yeah, my daddy made mistakes, but so did my mama. And I don't need to have to choose between the two of them because they both made mistakes. And what Tracy tried to do was she still tried to be close to the mama and the daddy. But the problem with the mama is the mama wants all the allegiance, all the allegiance. And what the mama was saying was, if you ain't my friend, you my enemy. And I think she treated Tracy like an outsider because Tracy tried to maintain a relationship with the father. And because Tracy didn't want to choose, Tracy said, I'm not choosing. I want to have a relationship with both. And the mama emotionally cut off Tracy. It's not really over the fact that Tracy had a baby because as we know, as we know, Trina had a baby before Tracy had a baby. Trina had babies before Tracy got pregnant. And this is where I'm going to go back to say, here is Tawanda once again, trying to rewrite history. Tawanda is very like, like, like uh, Tamar said in that video. Tawanda is sneaky. Tawanda, baby, I love her to pieces. But hide your stuff when she come over, because she snatched the wig off your head when you looked the other way. She's super sneaky, clever, and crafty. She's sneaky and she's crafty. And if you're not careful, you will miss it with Tawanda. You really got to listen to what Tawanda says, because if you really listen to her words, you really realize how much, how sneaky she is and how she plays on words. First of all, Tawanda was rewriting history in this episode, talking about she always fought for Tracy and she always will. Girl, roll the tape. Roll the tape. I have no idea what's about to go down, but, you know, it's important to try to figure out what it is that set it off. What made y'all think it was okay to do what y'all did last night? Hold on. Hey, no, hold on. I'm getting right down to it. What made you think that was okay to do yesterday? Okay, let me ask you a question. Answer. In your opinion, what was the problem with last oh, night? The problem last night is why would you have your boyfriend to say all that about us, how we need to get together, and you know the down dirty you know I was adamant that I didn't want to do it. Well, Tracy. But there's no well Tracy. It is as well Tracy. It's not a well Tracy because absolutely. if you know your sister, I had no idea y'all was going to do it last night. Why would you do that or have your boyfriend do that last okay, night? Well, but About everything that's no, it's no good. Okay, I'll let you finish. Because, oh, go ahead, then, Tawan, since you want to antagonize somebody. So don't play with me. Okay. Because guess what? You know exactly what you're doing. Don't be looking like that, you snake ass son of a gun. Okay. You're a snake, okay. and then you like controversy and you like all of that okay. so why would you do that so, so how am i antagonizing you really he's a boyfriend this my husband okay been with him for 29 years okay i don't know him from jack from jingle tracy called her a snake tracy said to her face you like controversy you like to keep mess going you the mean girl tawanda is the mean girl and she keeps trying to wiggle out of it she she, she always want to twist words around she sat on here this week and said that everybody's upset when she means everyone. She means the audience. The audience is upset because we're upset with the family because they didn't let Tracy sign the contract when they all signed and they signed the contract and left Tracy behind. First of all, that's not what fuels a lot of people's anger. First of all, that's not what um, fuels a lot of people's disappointment and disagreement with the sisters. It is not what fuels my disagreement. I can intelligently understand that there will be a record label that would say, hey, we don't want a pregnant lady to be on the stage. I can understand that. Now, could they have done something different with the contract? Yeah, they could have done something different with the contract. It's not like you're going to be pregnant for the rest of your life. I don't know what stage of the pregnancy Tracy was in, but they clearly could have said, well, we're going to integrate Tracy into the contract once she has the baby. Because once Tracy had the baby, guess who she would be like? She would be just like Trina. She would be just like Trina. I'm going to tell you right now the reason why Trina was allowed to be in the group and Tracy wasn't. It wasn't just over the fact that Tracy was pregnant. 
it was because like I told you before, Trina was very pretty. Trina was very pretty when she was young. In fact, Trina was actually, I'm telling you, one of the prettiest of the group. Now, Tony might have gotten prettier over the years because her little money helped her. But out the gate, out the womb, out the womb as children, go back and look at some pictures. Trina had the beauty, and but she didn't have the voice. Trina had the beauty, but not the voice. And so I'm sure that record label said, we're going to take Trina. I know Trina got a baby already, but we're going to hide them babies in the corner. Because we still don't even know who, who the daddies are of them babies. <laughs> Trina know how to hide her past because we still don't even know who the daddies are of Trina's kids. Um, but he's been hidden all these years and he has stayed hidden. And that record company hid that daddy too. Okay. But what they wanted Trina on that group because Trina was pretty. But she couldn't sing like Tony. And so they got Tony to be up front. Trina was a back in the background singing because she was cute, but they needed more than one background singer, so they brought T Tawanda along. <laughs> That's how it happened. Tawanda was only there because a Tracy couldn't be there. <laughs> because if Tracy was not pregnant, I think Tracy sings better than Tawanda. It would have been Tawanda on the outs. Ta Tawanda knows it, and she knows it. So when Tawanda's sitting over here rewriting history, talking about everyone is disappointed and that they left Tracy behind. No, that's not why we disappointed. Let me speak for myself. That's not why I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed because not what you did back in 1980 when you signed the contract is what you've been doing since 1980. I'm talking about the whole eight, nine years we watched Braxton Family Values and how you treated Tracy. It's not about that dog on contract, but that's what like, Tawanda likes to do. Tawan is that type of shifty person, just like, just like um, Tamar said, she's shifty. She likes to shift the conversation to something else. She want to shift the conversation to be from the way they treated Tracy in the 2000s, the 1990s, to be about what they did back in the early 1980s. Girl, that ain't the problem. It ain't the problem about that contract. The problem is what you did for the 20 years after you signed that contract. And the reason why I know uh, Trina got to be on the group, even though she already had a child, because Trina sat on there, like I said, she should stop hanging around the mean girl. She should stop hanging around the mean girl. She said, yeah, because what they told us was that um, they want every woman to like you and they, um, they want every man to want to be with you. Well, if they want every woman to like, to want to be like you and every man want to be with you, then why would you be on there, Trina? You already had children. I don't know, was Trina married, whether she was married or not? Then why would a man uh, want to be with you when you already had kids? You weren't the ideal woman to want to be with back in that day. You weren't. So all of a sudden, Trina is trying to frame the story as if her and Tawanda were the better picks and Tracy wasn't the better pick. Nah, they picked Trina because Trina looked the best. And we all know about the music industry. They into looks. And they put Tawanda because they needed a third person. Tawanda was the third wheel. That's what she was. The third wheel. And we're going to see later on Tamar better watch out. Because Tamar is definitely on the house. Tamar better go get her some new sisters. <laughs> because let me tell you. The Tawanda and the Trina machine are working overtime on Tamar. They're working overtime on her now. Now that Tawanda and Trina freaking frack don't have Tracy around to bully and to make the scapegoat for everything. Um, they're going to turn their eyes on Tamar and Tamar would run around ganging up on, 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 on Tracy too. And now what she realized is when she was at this little uh, birthday celebration, she started to realize that these people ain't for her. And the problem with you're going to find Tamar is now that, uh, Tracy's not here to speak facts and speak truth and be bringing these problems to the forefront. Tamar has decided she's going to be the person to do it. Well, get ready for the backlash that Tracy got. Get ready for it, Tamar. Tamar been going to therapy. She's becoming all enlightened. She wants to call out all the bull crap in this family. Well, you better get ready for the attacks, Tamar. Because there's a whole lot of people who want to keep these secrets secrets. And that includes your mama, that includes Tawanda, and that includes Trina. And the minute you start opening up your mouth and spilling things, they're going to come for your neck. They're going to come for your neck just the way they did Trina. Because they don't want to keep this stuff 
come in the light. They don't want to keep it to come in the light. And, and you ain't paying the bills of that mama. Now, Tamar, if you were paying your mama's bills again, maybe she'd be on your side. But right now, you ain't paying her bills. She, so she's not going to protect you. She is not going to protect you. You better get on a plane and go to uh, Japan with Tony and stay away from it. Tamar, you better do what your what your what your your father's doing. You better do what your my, um your brother's doing, and you better do what Tony's trying to do. And you better stay the hell away. You got enough problems. You got your hands full full over there with your husband, ex husband. What's that white man's name? Jeremy Jr. <laughs> Whatever his name is. You got your hands full. You don't need to be fighting over here with your sisters. And let me tell you. You not going to win with Tawanda. Tawanda is a fierce competitor. She's been fighting her whole life. She's been fighting these kind of fights that she likes to fight where she likes to rewrite history. You ever notice when Tamar brings up the fact that she and her sisters aren't close? You ever notice that Tawanda says, well, whenever you call me, I pick up the phone. Whenever you text me, I pick up the phone. Whenever you need me, I'm there for you. Tawanda, that ain't what a friend is. A friend doesn't wait for you to call them. A friend calls you and reaches out to you. A friend doesn't wait for you to text them back. A friend texts you back. A friend takes the initiative. That's what a real friendship looks like. But Tawanda likes to twist the narrative like she's doing a whole lot because she picks up a phone. Girl, picking up a phone don't mean you necessarily my friend. <laughs> What? That's just courtesy to pick up a dog on phone. No, a friend reaches out. You see, Tawanda likes to twist stories. She likes to make herself look good when she's the one actually not carrying her load. She tells Tamar the same things. When you call me, I pick up the phone. When you text me, I text you back. When you tell me you need me, I come. She tells uh, Scratchy the same thing. Well, why don't you call me? Why don't you text me? Why don't you do that? All that. Why don't you call him? He's the one grieving. He's the one who lost his mama. Shouldn't you be calling him? I'm telling you, just like Tamar said, she's sneaky. Tawanda said, I'm not the one that really wants to be putting uh, the family's business out here, but I guess I'm going to have to do it if I want to save the name of the family. Girl, no, you're trying to save your name. Here she is once again talking about she wants to defend the family. No, Tawanda, you defending yourself. She twists stories. I just don't like it. Like I said, where's the Academy Award for T Tawanda with the best lies in town? Let me tell you, when they had that little birthday party for um, Tracy and Tamar uh, arrived, well, that wasn't the birthday party. It was when they were planning the birthday party and Tamar arrived. Did y'all notice that neither, Tam neither uh, Trina or Tawanda or even that mama acknowledged the fact that Tamar had a number one record? Tamar just had a number, had a record song that hit number one, and there was no mention of it by the sisters. In fact, it was the producers who had to come out, bring flowers, and actually recognize that Tamar was number one. If you really love your sister, and like Tamar said, she hadn't even seen or talked to Tawanda since they did that last therapy session with Miss Spirit, that means that even when Tamar had a number one record, Tawanda didn't know, didn't even call Tamar and say, hey, sis, congratulations. Well, I guess Tawanda was waiting on Tamar to call her. <laughs> I guess, Tamar, you were supposed to call Tawanda and say, Tawanda, I'm just calling and let you know I got a number one uh, record so that she could pick up the phone and say, oh, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> so not only did neither Trina nor Tawanda reach out to Tamar to say congratulations on your number one record and acknowledge it. And they didn't even want to acknowledge it on this TV show. They were like, yeah, it ain't no big deal. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they, maybe they congratulated her in IG, um, in social media. So let me, let me maybe lay off on that one. But they should have acknowledged it on the TV show. Give her some props on the TV show. Because like you said, Tawanda, you here to show all the family business. Well, why can't you be on here giving some props on TV then? It should have been mentioned. But, you know, the producers came in and did it. The producers came in and did it. And um, we see that even with that number one song that Tamar has, she's still getting a lot of help from Vince. Why, why Tamar leave Vince? <laughs> because what? Ta we know why she left him because his money started going down and Tamar's head started getting big. Because when Tamar wasn't making no records, she was all up under Vince. Talking about how she loved her some Vince, loved her some Vince. 
And um, Vince was happy to have Tamar because Vince was like, I got money, but this little extra weight I'm carrying, I don't know what kind of women I would attract. And um, I'm going to stick with Tamar because at least she comes from a musical family. And maybe she won't want to be with me so much because of my money. But yeah, Vince, she was with you for your money and your talent. Because the minute your money started going down um, and her money started going up, she started popping off at the mouth. Popping off at the mouth. I tell y'all, that's when it all started going, going to pieces. She really started getting downright disrespectful. And next thing you know, they fussing and fighting in that house. And Tamar is like, now I got fame. I got money. I'm going to go out and get me another man who got money and who, and who also don't weigh as much as you, Vince. And that ain't worked out well for Tamar. She should have stuck with Vince. <laughs> she should have stuck with Vince because Vince was putting up with her bullshit. And now she's realizing, don't nobody want to put up with this from you, Tamar. No man wants to put up with this mess from you. And now you're starting to meet men out here uh, who these men is different, Tamar. These men are not the men from 15, 20 years ago like Vince. They're not, these men out here will dish it right back at you. You want to dish it out? They can dish it right back. You want to be petty? They can be petty. Because them petty wars going on on IG between Jeremy and Tamar. She, she done met her match. She done met her match. She was, she's used to Vince who would take the high road when she'd be popping off at the mouth. Well, these new people she dating, they ain't taking no high road. They not listen to Michelle Obama. When you go low, Tamar, they going to go high. No, they going low with you. They going to the gutter with you and they getting the best of you. They're really making you look crazy and stupid out here. So, um, you probably need to pull on back, pull back girl, pull on back and go sit down. But Tamar living in, in delusion too. <laughs> they all rewriting history. Tamar sat over here crying, talking about, um, she's so happy that she and Vince have a good co-parenting relationship because, uh, her parents did a good job at <laughs> showing the girls that even if you aren't romantically involved, you can still have respect for each other and come together for the right reason. Where, how, when, when we seen that with the Braxton family, y'all don't get along with none of your exes hardly. <laughs> What is Tamar talking about that she learned this from her mama? You didn't learn this from your mama. I'm glad you know it with Vince. That's great, but you sure didn't learn it from your mama. Your parents didn't teach you that. Your parents taught you the opposite. Your parents, your mama taught you that no girl, you hold a grudge for 30 years. You do not come together for the right reasons. You hold a grudge for 30 years because y'all didn't even show up to your sister's funeral because you didn't come together for the right reasons. What the hell is Tamar talking about? You come together at the right reasons, even if you don't disagree. Well, if your family knew how to come together for the right reasons, even when you don't disagree, why the hell weren't you guys at uh, Tracy's funeral? Why weren't you coming together then? Unbelievable. I don't know why these girls don't think we got Google and the internet. But Tawana uh, but, uh, but over here peddling this same old bad Braxton family lies. Talking about that's why uh, Kevin Sr. is mad at Kevin Jr. Because um, he, he, he thinks Tracy wasn't in her right mind. I don't think that's what it is. I think that what Kevin Sr. is saying that Kevin Jr. ain't in his right mind. That's what I think. I don't think it was about Tracy. Um, because uh, I think it was about that Kevin Sr. doesn't believe that his son is ready for that. And what I also believe is that um, he's probably upset with his son because his son can't stand on his own two feet, don't know how to manage his life, and he wants his son to grow up, mature. That's what he wants. He wants his son to grow up, mature. And even in that conversation with the mama, the mama alluded to it. Even when the mama knew what was going to be going on in Tracy's will, which was a reveal. You see, the mama knew what was in the will. Because she said she had a conversation with Tracy about it. Tracy must have told the mama that she was leaving the rights and ownership to um, Kevin Jr. in the will. So if the mama knows that Tracy was going to do that, why doesn't the mama know the other parts of the will? Why don't she know the other parts of the will? And the mama said that she even asked Tracy, hey, one is, do you think Kevin Jr. is really ready for that? Because you probably know who really want the rights to Tracy's story was probably that mama. 
I'm telling you, I wouldn't be surprised if them sisters wanted the rights to Tracy's story. And that's why they end up having to use Kevin Jr. and work around Kevin Jr. Because if Tracy had left them sisters the rights to her story, they wouldn't even probably included Kevin Jr. in this, in this show. I'll tell you right now, if Tracy had left the rights to her sisters, to her story, they probably wouldn't even include Kevin Jr. in the show. They would have iced him out just like they iced out um, Kevin Sr. Because what they would have said was, we don't really need you, Kevin Jr. We really don't need you. We could do this to put the money in our pockets. Put it in our pockets. Put it in our kids' pockets. Put it in our, our boyfriend's pockets, our spouse's pockets. Everybody else on this whole show is getting paid, getting a check, except Tracy's husband. And the only reason Kevin Jr. is getting a check is because Tracy had the wherewithal to give Kevin Jr. the rights. Because what she probably also knew is the sisters wouldn't fight Kevin Jr. But if she gave the rights to Kevin Sr., they would fight him over it. Just like they tried to fight Kevin Sr. over that doggone house. Imagine if she had given the rights to Kevin Sr. They would have been fighting, fighting, her, fighting him over that too. They fought Kevin Sr. over the house they lived in. Now, I know y'all said they lost the house. Kevin Sr. lost the house. I can believe it because I don't think Tracy had a lot of money. I'm quite sure that house probably had negative equity, upside down equity. It wasn't much equity in the house. So Kevin Sr. probably walked away from the house. He said, I might as well walk away from the house because maybe he can't afford the mortgage all by himself. And the house didn't have no equity. The only reason you let a house go into foreclosure is because there's no equity. If there's equity, you sell the house and you, get the, and you take the equity out. It's foreclosed when there's not enough equity. And you say, hey, by the time I pay all these realtor fees, there ain't going to be no money left. And he walked away from it. They didn't have a lot of money, y'all. They didn't have a lot of money. And, um, but what little thing that they, that he did leave Kevin senior, the bank accounts and the house, the sisters came after that. Imagine if she had left the rights to her image to Kevin senior, they would have been in court suing him over that too. I know Tawanda would have, because remind, remember Tawanda likes to sue everybody, everyone. Tawanda was probably the one who initiated the lawsuit with Kevin Sr. That's why she's so mad at him because she was probably the one initiating the lawsuit. Remember, Tawanda was the one that sued um, Vince. Remember back in the day, Tawanda sued Vince over the rights to the son that was playing for Braxton Family Values? Tawanda sues everybody. She just sued bloggers. She sued, um, who else did she sue? I, I, she sued her husband. <laughs> Tawanda, Tawanda be a money hungry. Money hungry out here soon, whoever she can to get some money in her pocket. So before you come over here suing me, Tawanda, um, let me put my disclaimer. Everything I say on here is my opinion. I don't know none of this to be facts. This is my money. This is my opinion. This is purely entertainment. And it's meant to be for pure entertainment. Don't nobody take it to the bank as if it's facts. There you go, Tawanda. I got a disclaimer because I don't want you to come over here suing me because of my opinion of you. You know, Tawanda's money hungry because when they was at that little, um, <laughs> that little dinner with, with, uh, with um, Tawanda, Tamar, um, Tracy, and the mama, and they was all getting ready to leave, and Tawanda said, um, I'll take care of the bill. <laughs> and, and Tamar looked at her and said, of course you're going to take care of the bill because you're the only one that ate and ordered something to drink. <laughs> Tamar called her out, money hungry Tawanda, Talk about she paying the bill as if she was doing something. And it was Tamar who had to call us out and say, yeah, you paying the bill. Why wouldn't you pay the bill? Because you're the only one that ate and drank. <laughs> girl, Tawanda, you and money, girl, you and money. Y'all got a strange relationship. But like I said, Tawanda's the biggest liar on the whole show. Because I know y'all, I hope y'all watched that video I did when she went around for months, 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 went around talking about the reason why she cut her hair was because she was in solidarity, solidarity with Tracy because Tracy had cancer. Everybody running around tomorrow. Oh, what a nice gesture for Tawanda to cut her hair to be in solidarity with her sister because uh, she got, um, she has cancer. Then finally we realized that Tawanda didn't cut her hair. Her hair was already gone. She had alopecia. <laughs> Girl, it ain't called cutting your hair for somebody when your hair is already bald. Tawanda, girl, what is wrong with you? That's not considered cutting your hair when you already bald from alopecia. That ain't no act of solidarity. In fact, what you used, did was you used Tracy to hide behind Tracy for the reason you did what you did. Like I tell you, Tawanda loved to blame 
other people for something she already needs to do, should have done, or already did. Ugh, I can't stand it. And then she want to reframe it and call it, um, I'm respecting everybody's boundaries. <laughs> when when, when uh, Tawanda don't call you, she don't text you, <laughs> she don't think about you for six, seven, eight months. And you say, girl, why didn't you call me? She goes, oh, I was respecting your boundaries. She loved to twist the story. She loved to twist the story. Girl, respecting my boundaries. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Tawanda over here talking about, you know, for this heavenly birthday party for, for Tracy. She called up little a scratchy. <laughs> I'm going to run that to the ground. Did y'all see the part when uh, she was calling little scratchy on her iPhone? And she said, call little scratchy. And then Siri was like calling little scratchy. And Tawanda was like, she was all excited because Siri understood the command. Why are you so surprised? Why are you so surprised, Tawanda, that Siri knew how to call little scratchy? Because it was probably the first time you used it. <laughs> Siri should have said, who the hell is a little scratchy, Tawanda? <laughs> you mean little Kevin? Because <laughs> you, Tawanda, you know that Kevin Jr. has been in your phone as Kevin Jr. all this time. You just changed the name in your phone to scratchy. And so this was the first time you tried it out and you were like, I sure hope a Siri know who I'm talking about because Vaughn didn't know who I was talking about. My own kids didn't know who I was talking about. Nobody knew who I was talking about when I said a little scratchy. Sure, I sure hope on national TV, Siri knows. And she was like, oh yeah, I'm so happy Siri knows. <laughs> and didn't sit out here and embarrass me. Girl, Tawanda, go sit down. Tawanda, call up a little scratchy. Talk about, we're going to fly you out here. Girl, you ain't flying nobody. The production's flying you out. Tawanda, you ain't paying for nothing, girl. Just stop it. Stop it. But when Tamar showed up, she said, I ain't just here for some cake and some champagne. I'm here to expose some of these lies. And Tamar is like, she said, why did I know about Tracy being sick? And um, mom was the word. That mama didn't tell you, Tamar. That mama didn't tell you. No one told you. Tracy didn't want you to know. Because Tamar, what your sister Tracy knew is loose lips sink ships. And the bring about Tamar is Tamar has loose lips on Instagram, IG, social media. And, Tr and, Trina and Tracy didn't want that. Tracy didn't want to take the chance that you would find out Tamar and that you would post something on Instagram. You might have called it scripted or veiled or anything like that, but people would figure it out. And she didn't want it. She said, I'll tell you, she wanted to tell you to her face. But the truth of the matter is she didn't want you to know too soon because she didn't want you going around and telling everybody. Because what we also found out is that friend who dropped everything like Tamar said to be by Tracy's side came by Tracy's side because Tracy said she didn't want to be alone. Now, why would Tracy feel like she's going to be alone if all the sisters were there with her? You know why? Because Tracy wasn't really asking for her sisters to be around her. That's what I think. That's what I really think. Um, Tracy was like, I don't want all this toxic energy around me, especially if I'm either trying to get better or if these are my last days. And so Tracy brought in someone who she thought was her real friend to sit by her side. And it looks like those sisters showed up in the last days, just like Tamar said, by the time Tamar got involved, Tracy only had two weeks left to live two weeks. And let me tell you, anyone dying from cancer Typically, it is a long, slow decline. So there were a lot of months where those sisters weren't around. They weren't around. They weren't by a Trina, uh, Tracy's side, like they want to say. They was there for the last two weeks filming and getting some footage so they can say that they was there. That's what they were said. What's, what's, the, what's the rule of IG? If you don't take a picture, then you can't say you was there. That's what them sisters did. That's why they're so busy all the time flashing the same old pictures of when Tracy was ill. It's the same old picture. It's the same old picture in that room. No other pictures, no other footage because they really don't have no other footage. They don't really have no real long footage of other times when they were with Tracy and she was in her decline. No other pictures. It's all those last two weeks. This, this is lying y'all. I hope everybody sees it and Tamar exposed it and she said, well, I didn't even get there to the last two weeks and it sounds like the other family, they didn't know that much sooner either. Not that much sooner. Maybe they knew an extra week ahead, an extra two weeks ahead, something before Tamar. But Tamar was the last one to know. 
and she was hurt over it too bad tamar i don't know what to tell you listen when you don't have a good relationship with a person when they're alive don't expect them to be honoring no friendship with you or relationship with you in the last days of their life they're not here um, to make you feel good they there to, to do whatever they need to do to have a peaceful home going that's what they need to do and tamar turned tracy's death to be about her well, why didn't i know why didn't people tell me tamar over there blaming the mother tawanda trina tracy for not telling her i understand you hate or hurt tamar but what you need to be mad at is that you were left out of your sister's life and why 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 were you left out of your sister's life so that you weren't even on the short list to call you weren't even on the text you weren't even on the group chat nothing you you know what that's what you need to be worried about not blaming other people but look within yourself to figure out why were you the one she didn't want to tell that's the problem with tamar 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 don't take no responsibility for her actions and she always want to play the victim that's the big it's nice that tamar is coming into this awareness of things that are going wrong in the family that's fine tamar you come into the light you starting to see how toxic your family is you starting to see the bad treatment that your family does give you and how you guys give it to each other but the part you're missing tamar is you're, you're missing your own responsibility in that toxicity and that's another reason why your relations with men fall apart because you can see the toxicity in your men but you can't see the toxicity in yourself. You always think you right. You always think you not the problem. But you are the problem. And so as a result, toxicity breeds toxicity. Tamar needs to stop looking at what other people did to her. And for just a while, she needs to concentrate on taking full ownership of what she does. Period. Point blank. She didn't run around talking about how unfair it was that she didn't have more time with her sister. That's your fault, Tamar unfair was it fair the way you treated tracy to the point that she didn't even want to invite you and trina tried to tell her well y'all weren't even really talking y'all really weren't even, and 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 tamar's like what are you talking about tracy was just at my house um helping me do my closet that don't mean you was close who knows what was going on who knows what was just because i help you build your closet don't mean that i'm real good friends with you and i want to tell you all my deepest darkest secret tamar don't even know what friendship looks like if she couldn't evaluate that she still had a wedge between herself and um, Tracy, maybe that's why she don't understand what real friendship looks like. That's why she's sitting over there confused over why a friend would drop everything and go sit by the side of her, one of her best friends while she lived out her last days. She can't fathom it because she thinks friendship is coming over helping you put your closet together. Tamar, you got a lot to learn. You got a lot to learn about relationships. She talking about, well, the rift I had with Tracy was over a year ago. Yeah. You think people just get over shit, Tamar? You think people just get over stuff? That you think that just because you can treat someone bad a year ago, we could just forget about it? No, that's what, Trina, that's what Tracy was sick and tired of. She was sick and tired of getting over stuff. Y'all treat her bad, and then what y'all expect is her to get over it. She didn't get over it, Tamar. Uh, yeah, it was a year ago, pre-COVID. So what? She remembered. She remembered. And she's not going to change the way she's dealing with you just because you over it. No, people don't forget stuff. People may forgive, but they don't forget. That mama Evelyn, she said something good. She said something real good at the end of that birthday party. Uh, she said, uh, Tracy, you are loved and you are missed even, by, even from your enemies. Because <laughs> you got it like that. There you go. She summed it up right. That was the line of the episode when she said you are even missed by your enemies because you got it like that and that's exactly what's going on because there's a lot of people who treated tracy wrong in this family and now all of a sudden all of them talking about how much they missed her <laughs> lord have mercy lord have mercy lord have mercy on these women give them some mercy give them some grace because they need a lot of healing they need a lot of healing but this was the first time that this show um really in a lot of ways at least try to focus on something good but it still fell short it fell short so i don't know what's going to happen with the rest of the episodes um because they can't just keep talking about tracy the whole time uh, they, i hope they don't keep exposing all of the problems with kevin jr i know when the previews came up we saw someone laying on the couch look like they drunk i sure hope that ain't kevin jr laying on the couch drunk i really hope they're not about to one show kevin jr getting arrested going to jail 
can't afford an iPhone and now they're going to show him pass out on the couch. I sure hope that's not what they do because otherwise, I'm telling you, they are really trying to tear down Tracy's family. They're trying to tear down her family. They're going to show her son what? With all these problems and then they're going to show the husband icing him out, talking bad about him. And then, but then, you know, here they want to admire her family and talk about, um, Trina want to talk about how she admired Tracy and her grandkids, how close she was. And she over here running up behind her kids talking about, I want some grandkids from you. Well, maybe they want to, maybe they don't want to give you no grandkids because maybe they didn't think they weren't, had the happiest childhood themselves. Maybe they're not interested. Maybe they're not interested in having no kids because maybe they might didn't like what went on in their own childhood and they're not really interested in giving you no child, no grandkids. You ever thought about that? You ever thought about that, Trina? Why your kids didn't want any kids? She over here begging for some grandkids so she can be like Tracy. And her son over here talking about he's trying to be on sobriety. I guess he picked that up from his mama too. I don't know. Let me not speculate. But he over here talking about he ain't doing no drinking for a year. He puffy too. He puffy just like that. I'm telling you that, that alcohol will puff you up. It will puff you up. He said, Trina said, you've been married for nine years now and I still ain't got no grandbaby. But maybe Tracy needs to ask him the question, was there anything that went on in your childhood that would make you not want to be a father? Anything? Any kind of trauma behind that? Nah, she just over here still asking for what she want, but not asking why he don't want no kids. Why? What about it? What, what about it is turning you off? What kind of trauma you got going on in the back? Even if it's not trauma, what about it makes, gets you turned off? It's got to come by some of the stuff that he's seen. And when he was raised, some of it's got to come from there that he's decided, no, I don't want that. And then here you got Vaughn over here dipping into these grown men's lives, talking about, well, you better get a mastectomy because you don't want to give no woman that much control because if she want to have kids, she going to have kids. <laughs> Woo! Vaughn said it ain't enough for him to control Trina. He got to control these kids' penises too. <laughs> Trina was hotter than fish grease saying, listen, listen. I'm okay with you talking to me any old kind of way and telling me when to shut up and be quiet and telling me what to do. But don't be going over here telling my sons not to, not to have vasectomies because I want a grandbaby. Vaughn said, let me teach you how not to be controlled by a woman. <laughs> snip, 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 sip. Because if you uh, don't get no snip, then that woman's going to control you. And if you want to stay in control, then you better get snipped. Trina said, you know, you can't, you don't be telling my boys to get vasectomies. They can wear condoms. <laughs> Vaughn said, I tell your boys whatever I want to tell your boys. Uh, you need to stop pushing. Stop pushing and sit on over there and be quiet. <laughs> sit on over there and be quiet and have a drink, Trina. Have a drink. Vaughn said, you're not going to run over me like y'all don't run over all these other men in your life. <laughs> and he said, and I'm going to teach these boys how to not get run over too. <laughs> Whether it's good advice or not good advice. Vaughn on a mission. Vaughn is on a mission to make sure that these ladies, these sisters, don't run over him like these sisters have run over all the other men in their lives. But let me tell you, Vaughn is rude as hell. He is certainly rude. <laughs> he rude, y'all. I don't like the way he put things. I don't like the way he speaks to Trina. I don't think, I don't like the, he act like he giving orders. Stop pushing. Go sit down. <laughs> don't be talking to me like that. <laughs> don't be talking to me like that. Uh-uh. I did my video over there over Dr. Bryant versus Cam Newton. And Dr. Bryant was talking about low functioning. Uh, that's low functioning, Vaughn. Low functioning. When you talk to someone like that, that's low functioning. You need to learn how to convey your feelings, your thought in a more thoughtful manner. He lazy. He just says whatever he thinks and he, he just, it just comes out rude. Very, very rude. Very, very snarky. Very, very nasty. But you know what? Trina's used to dealing with nasty, mean people. That's why she running up over here hanging out with Tawanda, freaking frat. Trina loved to hang around rude, nasty people. Well, there you go. She used to it. She used to it. She had that toxic relationship with Gabe. They talked they talk to each other in kind of way. They was rude to each other. Now she got a rude husband in Yvonne, and she liked to hang around rude, mean Tawanda. So... At this point in time, I'm over Trina's tears crying because she always going to be crying over somebody treating her rude and mean, but yet she's still going to be over there falling up underneath them people all the time. Always going to be falling up underneath them, even though they rude and mean and talk to, talk to her any kind of way. 
But I'm not gonna let these sisters keep rewriting history. No, no, sorry, sisters. You guys gonna get fact checked on all these videos out here in the internet. You're gonna get fact checked. So uh, I hope you ain't gonna do no whole season of this. I really hope not. But that's it, y'all. I will talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>